Welcome to the Triathlon Nutrition Academy podcast, the show designed to serve you up evidence-based sports nutrition advice from the experts. Hi, I'm your host, Taryn, accredited practicing dietitian, advanced sports dietitian, and founder of Dietitian Approved. Listen as I break down the latest evidence to give you practical, easy to digest strategies to train hard, recover faster, and perform at your best. You have so much potential, and I want to help you unlock that with the power of nutrition. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Triathlon Nutrition Academy podcast. We are celebrating a pretty big milestone next week. It marks our 52nd episode, so one year of podcasting. And I've asked my good friend, Steph Hansen, the former chief of Wits Up, to flip the mic around and interview me on my own podcast. So we're really going to take you behind the scenes of what it's been like podcasting over the last year and 52 episodes and what I've learned and where we're going, all my plans for where I want to take this podcast in the next year and beyond. So definitely tune into that next week. I actually can't believe we are almost at 52 episodes. It is insane. Keeping up with a weekly drop of an episode, I cannot tell you how much work it is. It seems really simple and easy when you listen to podcasts, but there is a lot of hours and work that goes in behind the scenes to get this thing in your ear every single week. In today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about protein powder. I've had a lot of people mention protein powder to me lately. As if it's like the best thing in the world and they seem really proud that they're using it. And a few questions around what is the best one to use and why. So I'm going to tackle that for you on the podcast. I'll dive into what I look for and I'll try not to offend supplement companies in the process. You know I'm going to say this, but the first thing that I want to mention is that I have a very food first philosophy. It is extremely easy to get enough protein from food without needing to supplement with a protein powder. And as a supplement, that's exactly what it is. It should be a supplement to a balanced diet in addition to. It shouldn't be used to replace things. We get plenty of protein from the food that we eat. We get protein from all of our meat, so red meat, chicken, fish. We also get protein from all of our dairy products, so milk, cheese, yogurt, custard, sort of. (laughs) You also get protein from eggs. And our vegetarian sources like tofu, tempeh, all of the legumes, nuts and seeds. All of those are great food options that provide plenty of protein and will meet your needs on a day-to-day basis. Even if you're following a vegetarian or strict vegan diet, you can get enough protein from food. Now, there are a few situations where I might strategically use a protein powder, but only if you can't get it through real food first. So you might want to think about it as a convenience option sometimes, not something that's going to feature every single day. If you know, you're know you a triathlete and you're busy and you're rushing and you're always on the run, trying to get from one training session to work, trying to get from training to bed in the evenings, then you know sometimes it can be useful as a convenience option. I will use it strategically also around a strength session where we're trying to maximally stimulate our muscle protein synthesis goals, so building new muscle and building strength in that muscle. So I will strategically use it there with some people. I will also sometimes use it to make your recovery meal tick all of the right boxes for you. Now, usually if you're at home, that's really easy with food food. We don't need a protein powder there. But we might need to use it if you're in a location where food's not feasible or it's not easy or you're traveling or you're at a race or things like that. So we can use it to our advantage in some situations there. I will also sometimes use it with athletes to bump up the protein of a meal that might not necessarily meet someone's target. So a couple of examples there might be a porridge and you're not looking at doing high-protein yogurt either with it or on the side, or you're not having milk in a coffee on the side. So I will sometimes use it there. I might also sometimes add it to a smoothie 
if you're using expensive water, uh, I mean almond milk, (laughs) as the base. But a protein supplement is purely just protein. And I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. When we talk about having things like dairy, which are a good protein source, like a high protein yogurt like Chobani, yes, it's providing protein, but it's also providing a huge range of other nutrients that you don't get from taking a powder. So that yogurt's also going to give you some carbohydrate. It's going to give you some fat. It's also going to give you some calcium and other micronutrients that we need in our diet that you aren't going to get from just a protein powder alone. So keep that in the back of your mind. There's a whole heap of other food chemicals and things in food that we don't get from taking a supplement. So if you can use food first, my preference is to always do that because there are so many more nutrients that you'll get that's going to help you have a healthier diet overall because you're getting a whole range of other things as well. So if you are using a protein powder already or you need to start using one for a particular reason, hey, I'm not saying go out today and buy one if you're not already using one, but if there are some gaps that you need to fill where it could be useful, I'm going to talk you through some of the things that I look for when it comes to protein powder from a dietitian perspective so that I know what my athletes are taking and what you're putting in your body. So the first thing that I always check on any supplement is if it's third-party batch tested, so something that's in form sport or has to test it. Now, these are independent companies that will test batches of a particular supplement for banned substances. Now, it doesn't guarantee that there's nothing in there that shouldn't be, but it's an extra layer of confidence that an independent company has batch tested that product. So each round of, say, protein powder, they make a batch and you can see the batch number on a label. It's the printed stamped number that varies every time. They will test one product out of that batch line and scan it for wider prohibited substances. Now, that is something that you should be looking for for any sort of supplement, pill or potion that you take. As an age group athlete, you may get drug tested. The elites have to be really mindful of this because they get drug tested all the time. But as an age grouper, you run the risk that you will get drug tested at some point in your career. But to be honest, I don't want to put something in my body that I don't know is what's in it. I want to be sure that what's written on the label is actually what's inside the product. Now, Australia has a much tighter regulated food industry. If you're in the US, it's a little bit more loose. And I would be even more mindful of supplements in the US because the controls are not as tight as they are here down under. So that's the first thing I would look for. The second thing you want to have a look for is to make sure it contains enough protein per serve. The number of protein powders I've seen that don't even contain anywhere near what you need in a hit is pretty insane. So what you're looking for is something that contains somewhere between 20 to 30 grams of protein per serve. So that might be a scoop or two scoops or half a scoop for some of them as well. So don't be afraid to adjust the size of your scoop, whether you're doing a half or one or one and a half to make sure that if you're using that supplement for a particular reason, it's ticking the right boxes. More doesn't equal better though with protein. When it comes to protein, our needs are like a cup and we want to fill our cup regularly across the day. If we underfill it, that's not ideal. And if we overfill it, things kind of spill out over the edges and become a bit of a waste. So we don't want to do that either. We know that 20 to 30 grams of protein in a hit is like that sweet spot where we are maximally stimulating muscle protein synthesis. More protein doesn't mean more muscle protein synthesis. We will oxidize it for energy, so we'll burn it for calories. And the rest, we break it down and pee out because we don't have a storage facility for protein in our body. We store fat as fat, unfortunately, and we store carbohydrate as glycogen in our liver and our muscles, but we don't have a storage facility for protein anywhere. So we would take what we need and then get rid of the rest. So we kind of make expensive pee if we're really overdoing it with protein. So another reason why we don't necessarily need to supplement 
because we may be overdoing it if we're using a concentrated form like that. Are you a triathlete sick of fumbling around in the dark with your nutrition? Is nutrition the missing link in helping you reach your goals? And do you want to maximize your training efforts and level up your performance? Of course you do. Come and join me for free at Fuel School. It's a free three-day live and online nutrition training week. And I've designed it to give you the nutritional edge in 2024 and lay the foundation of your day-to-day fueling and race nutrition. It's on the 14th to the 16th of January, 9 a.m. Brisbane time, so Australian Eastern Standard Time every day, which is 3 p.m. PST, 5 p.m. CST, and 6 p.m. EST on the 13th to the 15th of January. To register, head to fuel.school, yep, www.fuel.school. Whether you're a seasoned triathlete or just starting your nutrition journey, this free event is your opportunity to learn from an event sports dietitian and triathlon nutrition specialist and transform the way you approach your nutrition for 2024. Fuel.school, it's free. I'll see you there. The third thing I look for when it comes to a protein powder is what type of protein is it? And is it of high biological value? Not all protein sources are created equal. A high biological value means two things. It has all of the nine essential amino acids that our body can't make and we need to get them from our diet. And that ratio of those amino acids is similar to what is needed by our body as well. So they're typically whey proteins or any sort of milk-based protein powder and can include egg as well. Both of those sources, because they're animal sources, contain those nine essential amino acids that we need to rely on from the food that we eat. Now, if you follow a vegan diet or a vegetarian and don't have dairy sources, Then you can get plant-based sources of protein powder. You can get soy as an example, but they are often missing those essential amino acids that we're looking for and are potentially also in a different ratio to what's required by the body. So it's a lower biological value. If you can have animal sources, then you can complement that, say, soy protein with a lactose-free milk-based cow's milk if you're lactose intolerant, to get that full range of amino acids. But chances are if you're using a vegan protein powder like soy or pea or rice protein, then you probably don't want to have it with cow's milk products anyway. So you might need to look at getting those essential amino acids from somewhere else and having more of it as well. So you would only use one of those plant-based sources of protein powders if you were vegan or you had some form of milk protein intolerance. If you're lactose intolerant, you should be able to tolerate a whey protein isolate. That one's been filtered down so much that it's purely protein and it doesn't have a lot of carbohydrate in it. And when it comes to that whey or milk, the carbohydrate is lactose. So you should tolerate a whey protein isolate But something to test out if you are lactated like me, go something like a half a scoop first before you go the full hog and then suffer for that later. The fourth thing that you should look for when it comes to protein powder is what other random ingredients are in there? What can you see if you have a look at the ingredient list? You should be able to see whatever type of protein source it is and then what else is in there. Sometimes there's random things like stimulants, thickeners, gums, anti-caking agents, weird numbers. There's typically always a sweetener because I don't know if you've ever had straight whey protein isolate. It doesn't taste very nice. So they are generally all sweetened. But again, what type of sweetener is it? If you care about that, then you might want to have a look at the type of sweetener and opt for a non-nutritive sweetener and one that's more natural like stevia. So it doesn't taste like death but it's not a weird chemical shitstorm either. If you see on a label proprietary blend, avoid, avoid, avoid on anything, not just protein powder. If the company isn't open and honest about what is in it, then I would get out of there real fast. It makes me not trust them. So have a look at the ingredients if you do have a protein powder, see what's in it, see what the sweetener source is. And the goal here would be less is more. 
If you're thinking about using a protein powder, there are three questions I want you to ask yourself first. Why am I using this? Like, is there a specific reason or a strategy behind it? Or are you just taking it because the marketing got you, the bro science, or you feel like you should, or you think it's healthy? Ask yourself why. And then ask yourself, is that product safe? Has it been third-party batch tested by a company like Inform Sport or Hasta? If it hasn't, I'd question it a little bit. And then the third question is, is it actually necessary? Can I get what I need at that time from food? There are plenty of ways to get it from our diet that meet our requirements without having to supplement. It's really easy to get caught up in clever marketing and this bro science popular opinion that protein powders and protein supplements are needed for performance. You don't need protein powder to be a better athlete or to recover faster. You just need to make sure you're ticking off your recovery boxes that are specific to you and you can easily do that with food. Like I said in the beginning, there may be a few strategic opportunities that I'll use a protein powder, but typically I get people to have food food because there are so many more nutrients in that food item that will never be provided by a supplement or a protein powder. Now, I do have a couple of discount codes for protein supplies that I want to share with you. Now, up front, I get absolutely nothing for telling you about this. I will never be sponsored or be an ambassador for a supplement company. It's completely against my ethics. So these are just discount codes that I'm happy to pass on to you that I've asked for from the company because I think they're a good product. So I'll leave them in the show notes for you. But the first one is VPA. That's a protein powder company in Australia, and they do a really good whey protein isolate. That's cost-effective and minimal ingredients. The other one is Proformance, which is another Australian company. And they do more of a recovery powder mix, which could be useful too for some people. So you can use code TNA to get 10% off in the checkout for performance. They also do some really good gels and sports drink, which I like too, side note. So take home message, do you really need protein powder in your life? And if you do, use some of those steps for what I look for to make sure that the one that you have is right for you and it's providing what you need it to. If you want to talk me through your protein powder or your protein qualms, come and join me for Coffee and Questions. It's coming up again soon. It's on the first Thursday of the month inside the Dietitian Approved Crew Facebook group. So come and bring your protein powder labels there if you want me to check it out and we can troubleshoot it together. I'll pop the link in the show notes for you too to join that group. But jump onto Facebook, search for Dietitian Approved Crew And I go live on the first Thursday of every month at 8.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, so Brisbane time, for 30 minutes. It was a lot of fun last month, so I would love to see you there. I hope that's helped cut through a little bit of the noise when it comes to protein powders. I will see you next week for our one-year celebration episode. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Triathlon Nutrition Academy podcast. I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or want to share with me what you've learnt, email me at podcast at dietitianapproved.com. You could also spread the word by leaving me a review and taking a screenshot of you listening to the show. Don't forget to tag me on social media at dietitian.approved so I can give you a shout out too. If you want to learn more about what we do, head to dietitianapproved.com. And if you want to learn more about the Triathlon Nutrition Academy program, head to dietitianapproved.com forward slash academy. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to helping you smash it in the fourth leg. Nutrition! Nutrition!